perhaps the most recognized haunted painting out there. Similar to The Anguished Man, it was also once listed on eBay and is known for its associations with paranormal activity. Other than the artist, those who were directly associated with the painting, including an art critic, the owner of the art gallery, and John Marley himself, all died within the course of just a few years. Those who view the painting at its new home continue to feel a sense of danger, further perpetuating the disturbing myths which surround it and bringing its dark history more to light. Welcome, 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 Duality 9Xers, wherever you guys are, whatever you guys are, whomever you guys are, welcome. Hey, listen, guys, I'm excited about today's video because in this video, I'm going to talk about some very scary objects. I'm going to talk about haunted objects. I'm going to talk about haunted paintings. Actually, I was getting a lot of comments and a lot of people reaching out and saying, hey, guys, listen, when are you going to start talking about... Um, not necessarily just ghosts, but talk about the things that people have with them or in their homes or things that they found in like old abandoned buildings but are linked to some kind of paranormal entity, right? Like a ghost, a spirit, etc. And I said, you know what, that's a great point. And there's a ton of stuff out there. So anyways, I was able to piece together a few good, um, a few good videos here that I wanted to showcase and I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I hope you guys like it. Um, listen, if you guys are new to the space, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, definitely comment. Uh, I'd love to get I'd love to know where you guys are from. So if you guys are putting in a comment, maybe put down where you guys are and I can definitely give you guys a shout out on uh, one of my uh, upcoming videos. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, strap in, get ready. By the way, uh, the links to some of these videos um, are going to be in the description. Uh, if you guys, uh, because there's some really good content creators who kind of put together some of this stuff. So I wanted to kind of showcase that as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, so get ready guys, get ready. Uh, the ride's about to get bumpy and it's gonna get a lot of fun. So let's go. And three, and two, and one. Huh. When you get a disclaimer like that, right off the bat, that's scary. We're in for a treat. Paintings are truly a special form of art, having a seemingly magical ability to get a certain reaction from each viewer using only a brush and canvas. But it is as if some paintings somehow use more than that, using things that we simply cannot comprehend, and ultimately invoke feelings of fear from the viewer. Anguished man. The Anguished Man is often cited by some people to be one of the most cursed paintings in the world. There was allegedly a point in time where this painting was up for sale on eBay, with the condition that the purchaser could not bring it into their home. However, the listing was quickly pulled from the site under mysterious circumstances, and the painting was securely locked away. Oh. The artist is unknown, but it has been confirmed that they mixed their own blood into the paint, and allegedly committed suicide after completing it. The owner, Sean Robinson, acquired the painting from his grandmother, and at the request of his wife who was uncomfortable, kept it in the basement, where a flooding occurred shortly after. This left Sean no choice but to move the painting into his bedroom. The Robinson family has experienced terrifying activity ever since, claiming to see shadowy figures, moving objects, and hear whispering and crying throughout the house. The son of the family has even claimed that he was pushed down the stairs by an unknown force. To get his story out to the world, Sean has since created a series of video diaries on YouTube documenting his experiences with the painting and showing them firsthand. Sean is still unable to explain the causes of these strange events. There could be a perfectly reasonable explanation, Sean says, but I haven't found one yet. An oil painting created by Franz Stuck, known as the Wild Chase, has been the center of particular urban legends based on the scene that it depicts. It is believed that this painting was capable of predicting the future, 
particularly the start of World War II. It is a painting of the Germanic god Wotan, the god of war. Seated on horseback, behind him is the army of the dead. Many have made the claim that Wotan has a striking resemblance to Adolf Hitler. Strangely enough, wow. the painting was created wow. in 1889, the same year that Hitler was born. According to Germanic mythology, those who encounter this army of the dead will be either killed or taken to the underworld. Legend states that the dead are meant to represent the Nazis, following their leader into battle. Many viewers feel uneasy around the painting due to its disturbing similarities to future events which would almost form a new world order. Although the painting's prophetic abilities are stories of legend, it is likely, historically, that the painting did have an influence on World War II. Hitler was very fascinated with Franz Stuck's work and was even an inspiration for his short career as a painter. Hitler first saw the painting when he was 13 years old. He felt the fact that the painting was created the year he was born was a sign of some sort, and he had kept it in his personal gallery. Historians claim that Hitler modeled his infamous look based on Wotan to better resemble the pagan god. Despite the folklore that surrounds it, the wild chase is still studied by many artists for both its eerie approach to Germanic values and its historical wow, significance. Wow, that first, that first. The hands though, resist the him is man, perhaps that. That's kind of freaky stuff. Would you, if if you were in a position, would you buy something like that and would you put it in your bedroom? I don't know. No. The hands resist him is perhaps the most recognized haunted painting out there, similar to the anguished man. It was also once listed on eBay and is known for its associations with paranormal activity. What's with all these paintings going on It was painted in 1972 eBay? by Bill Stoneham, who based it on a photograph that was taken of him during his childhood. Changing significant elements of the scene, he added waving hands to the glass door behind oh, him and turned the girl into a porcelain doll. The name was derived from a poem that his wife wrote. The piece was sold at a gallery show to John Marley notably seen in The Godfather. Other than the artist, those who were directly associated with the painting, including an art critic, the owner of the art gallery, and John Marley himself, all died within the course of just a few years. Although their deaths were tragic, they weren't quite associated with the possibility of a cursed painting just yet. A few decades later, the painting was rediscovered behind an old brewery, where it was taken in by a family looking for more house decorations. After just a few days, the young daughter complained that the painting scared her, and that the boy and girl would often fight with each other. The parents eventually placed motion cameras in front of it, which are designed to only record when any form of motion is detected. Despite the cameras only being pointed at the painting, several pieces of footage were recorded. The two reported to see the colors of the painting change, and even the object that the girl was holding go from a battery to a gun pointed at the boy. Parents also just simply felt very uncomfortable getting near it. It was eventually purchased by an art gallery who was able to get in touch with Stoneham. Those who view the painting at its new home continue to feel a sense of danger further perpetuating the disturbing myths which surround it and bringing its dark history more to light. Woman of the Rain shares many parallels with the hands resist him in that observers have also claimed to feel a presence of discomfort when viewing it. The artist Svetlana Taletz felt like there was always someone watching her and one day she suddenly had a strong desire to draw. She believes that the final result of the painting depicts the spirit which watches over her. It was completed in only five hours, but she says, strangely enough, that she wasn't the one who made the painting at all. She claims that from start to finish, it felt as if her hand was being controlled by another person, and that she was in something called an automatic Whoa. state. Wow. The 
painting was placed in an art gallery and several customers who bought it returned it very shortly after, each of them with their own strange stories to tell. Some claim to have lost sleep, develop migraines, and feel a disturbing presence throughout their house whenever the painting was present. One person even returned it without wanting his money back. Woman of the Rain currently hangs inside a furniture store, where shoppers also claim to witness unusual activity when near it. Although, Tolets does not believe that this is the end for her painting. She states, I'm sure that every picture is for some particular person. I believe that for my woman, also there is a person. I'm sure there is someone who looks for it, as it looks for that someone. The story of the Tombstone Stagecoach painting dates back to 1994. Professional photographer James Kidd displayed one of his photos at an art gallery in Tombstone, Arizona. The photo was of an old stagecoach shop located not too far away from where the gallery was taking place. However, viewers of the photo soon began to notice something strange. The man in the photo standing next to the stagecoach is missing a head. James took the photo to Kodak and to other experts who confirmed that it was not doctored in any way, likely the result of accidental double exposure. One of the observers, who only goes online by the name of Laura, still could not get the photo out of her head. She received permission from James to create an oil painting recreation and claims to have felt great discomfort as she was making it. She then gave the painting to an office building, who asked if they could return it just three days later. They claimed that the painting would oh, always man. tilt itself on its own and that important papers were going missing and appointments were being severely messed up. Laura then moved it into her new home, where she and her husband hoped that the paranormal behavior would stop. Though not much to their surprise, havoc continued. The roof be began to leak, things would oh, move, man. and appliances would break. Laura and her husband also claimed that they heard knocking on their front door, only for no one to be present. James is still not entirely sure what caused the headless man to appear in the photograph, nor does Laura know if this has any relation to the weird things that she encountered. But there is one thing that she is certain about. If I had to do it over, she says, I would not have created this painting. Wow, guys. Hopefully you guys like that video. Check out Nation Squid. Uh, they, they've got some really, really interesting content. Uh, that was some pretty freaky stuff, you know. It, you always wonder, right? Going to like a pawn shop or, you know, uh, maybe like a garage sale and you stumble upon that really cool object or painting. But then you start to wonder, you know, something that it might almost look a little bit antique looking or a little bit older. And then you start to wonder, right? Wonder like, oh, I wonder who painted this. I wonder who made this. Or I wonder where it actually came from. The story, the history behind it. The last thing you want is to bring anything that actually has some kind of a paranormal attachment or something that could turn your life upside down. That is some pretty freaky stuff, guys. Haunted objects ever. Inside Myrtle's plantation is a haunted mirror. This building was built on an Indian burial ground. If you look into the mirror long enough, you can see the spirits of Sarah Woodruff and her two children. Just don't look too long. It's said they're trying to pull people into the mirror to replace them. One day, a Romanian man made a doll for his son, Letta. Sadly, while playing with the doll, his son one day fell into a lake. It's said that his spirit got trapped inside the doll. Anyone who holds this doll starts crying. And it's also said the doll moves around on its own. The Hands Resist Him is a creepy haunted painting. People who own it claim to have seen the characters in it moving around. Did you know the Annabelle doll from the movies is real? This doll is said to possess the spirit of Annabelle Higgins.
most haunted objects. Paranormal investigators get spooked sometimes, and based on this list, rightfully so. Oh. Here are the top five cursed objects too scary tough. for paranormal investigators. Number five on this list is the die book box. This is an evil box that tormented many people and even claimed some lives along the way. Zach Baggins writes, According to Jewish folklore, a diabook is a dark spirit that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. Legend has it that a diabook can be trapped inside of a box and prevented from causing mischief unless the box is opened, that is. Several years ago, the diabook box came up for sale on eBay. The seller listed a vintage wine cabinet that came from the estate of a woman who survived a World War or two concentration camp. The seller, an antique dealer named Kevin Manis, claimed that the first owner's granddaughter was terrified of the box, warning him that her grandmother said it held a diabook. After buying the cabinet, he was plagued by a series of unfortunate events and recurring nightmares of an old hag that would brutally attack him, causing him to wake up with bruises on his body. He also experienced an overpowering stench of cat urine in his home. Tragically, his mother suffered a stroke while opening the box. Not surprisingly, he decided to get rid of it. The box eventually ended up in the hands of Missouri Medical Museum director Jason Haxton, who was skeptical about the powers attributed to the box. He soon changed his mind. After acquiring the box, he began to experience a series of medical maladies, including bleeding eyes and strange rashes. He also began to dream of being attacked by an old hag and would also awake with bruises on his body. Kevin Manis told me that while the box was in Haxton's basement, a man died there and his body was found lying next to the box. He eventually became so unnerved by the box that he reached out to scientists and rabbis who instructed him to build a wooden ark lined with 24 karat gold, place the box inside, and bury it in the ground. Now this actually wasn't the end of the story for this box. The box was eventually dug up again and then later donated to a museum. This was after it had tormented a few more people, mind you, though. Now it's fully encased in a glass covering, but even that doesn't stop the evil spirit from coming after people. Many people who have visited this box have reported having serious episodes in the room while they're looking at it. Whatever spirit is trapped inside this box, it is clearly an extremely powerful one. The box remains on display at the museum, but I wouldn't recommend going to check it out if I was you. Number four on this list is the Devil's Rocking Chair. The Devil's Rocking Chair is actually from one of Ed and Lorraine Warren's most famous case, The Devil's Devil made me do it. Zach Baggins writes, The horror began in July 1980 when David Glatzel, 11 years old, became possessed by a demon. One night he woke up screaming, claiming that he had been visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, jagged teeth, pointed ears, horns, and hooves. David was, everyone agreed, not the kind of kid who liked scary movies or who was likely to make things up, and he was visibly shaken up by this experience. Experience. He became rather withdrawn and quiet. His older sister, Debbie, asked her fiancé, Orrin Johnson, if he would stay with her family for a while and see whether it would help David get out of his depression. Orrin, of course, agreed, but things didn't get better. David reported having more nightmares about the terrifying man who promised to take his soul. Odd scratches and bruises began to appear on the boy, and all the injuries seemed to happen while he was asleep. Odd sounds, which Orrin couldn't explain, were heard in the attic. Worst of all, David began to claim that he was now seeing the beast while he was awake. He was always seen sitting in the family's rocking chair, which the beast now claimed as his own. David was the only one who saw the beast in the chair, but family members often saw it rocking back and forth, seemingly under its own power. This was obviously a lot, so the Warrens were brought in to perform the exorcism. The exorcism took place in that rocking chair, and it's thought that the chair itself still has some evil energy from this spirit attached to it. Now the chair resides at the Haunted Museum, but owner Zach Beggins actually took the exhibit down because the chair was simply too dangerous, he thought. Number three on this list is the Hope Diamond. Don't get me wrong, guys. I would love to have this thing, but I just don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze here. Google Arts and Culture says, One of the most famous diamonds in the world, the Hope Diamond, originated in the Kula
Kular mine in Andhra Pradesh, India. According to legend, the stone is cursed and brings misfortune to anyone who owns it. The curse is said to have come about when the original diamond was stolen from the eye of a statue. The thief met a grisly end, kick-starting a pattern of misfortune for all those who possessed the diamond. Over the years, owners of the Hope Diamond have befallen fates including death by murder, execution, taking their own lives, bankruptcy, and imprisonment. Thankfully, the curse seems to have been lifted when the diamond was donated to the Smithsonian in 1958. Now, I don't really buy into the fact that this curse is lifted, in my opinion. Like, literally, if you own this diamond, then you die or someone you love dies. That's what's happened throughout history. In the best possible case scenario, you just get hit with, like, horrible luck and lose all your money or some other horrible thing. There just really isn't any good way to spin this. Owning the Hope Diamond is pretty much a horrible idea. Number two on this list is the Unlucky Mummy. Do not get on a boat if said boat is also carrying this mummy. Google Arts and Culture says the Unlucky Mummy isn't actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin lid of a high status woman who lived in around 950 to 900 BCE. Discovered in Thebes in the 1800s, the four young Englishmen who first purchased the mummy all died in unfortunate circumstances. Rumors of the curse soon spread, and in the early 20th century, journalist William Thomas Steed wrote an article on the jinxed artifact. Steed went on to be one of the passengers on the doomed Titanic. It's said that he told stories of the curse in the run-up to the disaster, with many believing that the mummy itself caused the ship's watery end. Today, the unlucky mummy is on display in the British Museum. The Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. Enter in the unlucky mummy, and boom, now the unsinkable ship goes down. Maybe it's a stretch to say that this thing caused the literal Titanic crash, but I can at least guarantee that it probably didn't help. At least this thing is now locked up in a museum very much on land and not connected to any boats that I know of. And number one on this list is the Hands Resist Him painting. I'm all about having some cool, groundbreaking art, but this painting definitely crosses the line. The lineup says, there is no doubt the painting is disturbing. It shows a young boy standing next to a girl doll with hollow eyes and a sad, downturned mouth. The doll is holding a strange device with wires coming out of it. The eeriest part of the painting are the many disembodied children's hands reaching toward the boy through the glass panels of a door just behind him. But even more disturbing than the painting itself are the stories of what has happened to people who come in contact with it. A few years after the painting was sold, the art critic Henry Seldes died. Then the gallery owner died. Then, in 1984, John Marley died. The painting disappeared, not surfacing again until 2000, in a bizarre posting on eBay. The new owners were trying to sell it because, they said, it was haunted. They claimed the boy and the doll in the picture would fight with each other during the night, terrifying their four-year-old daughter. They set up a motion-sensing camera in the room for three nights and claimed they had captured the boy in the picture, leaving the frame and coming into the room, apparently fleeing in terror. The literal kid in the painting is leaving. Oh, oh. Not freaking cool, guys. My paintings are supposed to be static and not moving, and they definitely aren't supposed to be walking around my home scaring the living bejesus out of me and my family. Apparently, this painting is locked up in a storage locker now, and no one is allowed to see it. When it comes to shopping on the World Wide Web, I've always been a fan of using eBay for one-of-a-kind Christmas gifts. I've been lucky so far and haven't bought anything cursed, either on accident or on purpose. I think the closest call I've had was a wand that I bought for a friend that almost didn't turn on on the first time I tried it, but I think I can chalk that up to a glitch and not some malevolent spirit. Have you ever bought something weird from eBay? Let me know in the comments and let's crack this haunted stuff together, shall we? Oh, yeah. Alright, have you ever visited somewhere where you were sure a painting was following you with its eyes? How about a photo that just gave off, like, bad vibes? So one such item, a seemingly innocent photograph of a distinguished Victorian gentleman named Martin, emerged from the shadows of a dusty attic, akin to a forgotten relic from a long time past. Initially, it graced the owner's display, an intriguing conversation starter lifted from the sepia-toned pages of a forgotten family album. See, my apartment conversation starter is the tapestry of the popular Barbie movie universe character, Bibble, that takes up an entire wall of my living room. But hey, to each their own. 
All right, back to the important stuff today. The passage of time is about to unravel an unsettling narrative woven around this seemingly innocent little picture. The anomaly wasn't visual, but more something you could smell, like an unsettling scent that clung to the photograph like an ethereal residue. The aroma, a mysterious blend of scents, by the way, wafted from the each photograph, a scent symphony that defied the logic of temporal confinement. We've got roses dancing with the fragrance of burning embers and a sharp essence of wood mingling with the air. The irregularity of these apparitions painted an eerie aura around the photograph, a scent-based enigma that that was like, yo, what the heck? As the unsettling fragrances ebbed and flowed, a decision was made to reach out to the spectral presence suspected to be intertwined with the photograph's history. So what did they do? They grabbed a Ouija board. Yeah, the age-old conduit to the supernatural. It became the intermediary between the living and the spirit that was lingering between the photograph and the photograph's frame. The encounter was shockingly devoid of hostility. I say shockingly because, hey, if there's one thing I will constantly preach against, it's the use of a Ouija board in any sense. It's like a telephone where you don't know who or what is going to answer and you can't trust right. Anything. And what do you know? The whole household aura? It went from being great to being mm, not so great. The paranormal curtain lifted, revealing a surge in unexplained phenomena that whispered of a restless energy tethered to said photograph. The decision was made. This photograph, now a vessel for the unknown, found itself exiled from the confines of the home, making its way into the hands of a collector. Where did the damn thing wind up? That I can't tell you, but I don't particularly want to come across it anytime soon. So if you bought a weird sepia picture from eBay, burn it, stick it in a trunk, I don't care, bury it for all I know. Well, we might as well stick with the demented artwork theme we've got going so far and move on to what is known as the haunted eBay painting or the hands resist them. Based on a real life photograph of the artist from around the time so he the was third time we're talking years old, about this, this painting, this a spectral dance of a young boy, a doll, and disembodied hands, traces its origins to an abandoned brewery where a California couple stumbled upon its eerie presence. Soon after introducing the painting into the sanctum of their home, the couple, besieged by an unfolding narrative of the uncanny, decided to part ways with their newfound possession. So where did they go? Good old eBay. So they presented their artifact to the world, accompanied by a cautionary note that echoed. Accompanied by a cautionary note that echoed with an ominous whisper, this painting may or may not possess supernatural powers that could impact or change your life. Good marketing or a genuine worry? Now well, let's see. The essence of their warning found roots in alleged nocturnal skirmishes between the painted boy and girl, an unsettling manifestation that their daughter ultimately revealed. As if extracted from these surreal realms of a ghost story, the advertisement carried whispers of the boy stepping beyond the confines of the canvas, an occurrence that served as the catalyst for their decision to relinquish their spectral acquisition. The curious drama surrounding this haunted masterpiece reached its crescendo when it found a new custodian in none other than Kim Smith, a gallery owner hailing from Michigan. The gavel of the digital auction pronounced a sum of $1,025, sealing the fate of the hands resist them. But the enigma surrounding this painting refused to be contained within the pixels of online transactions. In a revelation that either deepened the mystique or surprised no- in a revelation that either deepened the mystique or surprised nobody, depending on how you look at things, Kim Smith disclosed that her inbox bore witness to a procession of emails, testimonials from individuals claiming visceral reactions just by looking at a photograph of the painting. Reports of repulsion and physical illness became the postscript to the tale of the haunted eBay painting. This ordinary artifact turned conduit to the spectral, illustrating that even in the realm of like e-commerce, the line between the tangible and the ethereal can kind of blur and not in a good way. Now, if you feel ill after my talking about this painting today, please let us know in the comments so we can do a 10 part experiment on everybody's psyche. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't you trust me? Here's something you don't see every day, or at least I don't. How about we try on a haunted bra for size? Not actually a weirdos, just in theory. It's one of the weirdest frightening, but maybe one of the least sanitary items posted on eBay on today's list. All right, picture this folks. A one-time used bra, white and kind of ratty, and designed for a woman with a 32A bust. But it's also packing some major spirit power, or so claims Tanya Rose, the woman selling it. But this isn't a secondhand bra, it is a third hand bra. Because the listing claims it belonged to a deceased woman, one who lived a life with a lot of amorous adventures and partying before she met an untimely end. So why would you want it? Because according to the seller, the spirit of this crazy lady never quite left. Her spirit is still hanging around in her bra, and anyone who wears it will inherit her success in the romantic world. Get ready for a big increase in the number of admirers and gifts. But it may not have wound up with a woman, because it supposedly has another ability. So if you're going to put a lit white candle near the bra, the spirit of the woman will appear. But if you're going to place a red candle, the owner's going to come back and greet you with a very sensual encounter with the spirit world. And while this is terrifying at all, it kind of reminds me of another haunted bra from pop culture. Anybody remember George the Bra from iCarly? Does anybody remember George the Bra from iCarly? So he was this large pink bra who told ghost stories to anybody watching. And he made his first appearance on an iCarly sketch in the episode I Give Away a Car. It also appeared at the beginning of I Saved Your Life. Heck, at one time there was even a segment on the actual website, iCarly.com, that was dedicated to his stories. So I guess he's not the only haunted bra anymore. Okay, folks, we're gonna move on to a different bust uh, object. Sorry, it was an easy joke. 
and I've spent way too much no time lately on folks who have no mastered the groaning style of humor. The genesis of this haunting creation is intertwined with the tragic demise of its creator, William. Crafting sculptures from unhardened clay was his passion, a pursuit that met eh, an untimely end on the day he was crushed to death in a work-related accident at the brickyard. The statue, a product of that fateful day, stood as a spectral relic, a tangible link between the artist's final moments and the unknown afterlife. A twist on the tale comes as a fellow laborer, bearing witness to the aftermath of the tragedy, laid eyes on the forlorn statue at the job site the following day. The decision to take it home marks the inception of a series of unsettling events. Initially dormant, the statue's dormant malevolence sprang to life when it was unearthed from its storage confines and proudly displayed in the den. Now the den, once a, you know, a sanctuary, because we all love a good cozy space, transformed into an oppressive space, laden with an unexplained heaviness that permeated the air. The mundane act of doors slamming of their own accord became an eerie symphony. With the culprit, law investigation, revealing wide open portals into the unknown. Nearby decorations, juxtaposed with the malevolent sculpture, met their demise in spontaneous acts of shattering. The inanimate bust, you know, anchored in the physical realm, defied the laws of, well, everything. It exhibited a will of its own, orchestrating a macabre ballet as it pivoted to face the wall without even the slightest so human intervention. The surreal crescendo reached its peak when a dark shadow or mist, an elusive apparition, materialized in said den, heightening the spectral ambiance. Terrified by the unfolding supernatural saga, the owner was like, okay, let's get rid of this thing, I can't do it anymore. Desperation and fear impelled him to beseech a friend to orchestrate the artifacts of Exodus from his life, if you will. The friend, perhaps understanding the gravity of the situation, turned to eBay. I feel like Christian Bro when course. I say that. Thrusting the haunted statue into the labyrinthine corridors of online right. auctions, leaving its paranormal legacy for a new, unwitty custodian to unravel. And people wonder why young Did folks aren't buying after? random art to display in their homes anymore. Seriously. Alrighty, everybody, we're gonna end today with some of my favorite haunted oh, items in the whole wide man. world haunted dolls. Since they're sadly a bit of a cliche, I figured it was best to save them until the end of our time, so I didn't risk anybody getting bored right off the bat, and so I wouldn't be tempted to turn today into a top five scary dolls for sale. Granted, I might still do that, to be determined. The doll that mostly caught my attention today was this beautiful Anne of Green Gables doll. With her copper braids, dark green dress, straw hat, and porcelain, and really nicely amongst my personal collection. But this doll, located in Windsor, Ontario, came with a picture of her supposed spirit. The description says, this is not a joke, she is very active. Now, I already own a couple of demon dolls, so maybe I don't want to mess with too many spirits. The seller claims that the doll was purchased at a garage sale 20 years ago and has moved positions on its own. And it could be yours for a mere $60 plus shipping, which is a steal if you ask me. I was performing at an oddities market recently, and the haunted dolls at that event were going for a premium, mostly because in a crowd like that, it's pretty easy to find out if the item in question is a fake. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay, well, let's see. We've got this event. It was run by a world-renowned mind reader who owns one of the most spirited dolls I've ever been in the presence of. If you've heard of Walt, yeah, his owner. One of the vendors, another one of the vendors was an extremely experienced tarot reader who can call BS in an instant, and uh, hey, I was also there, and I could tell pretty quickly if a doll has a mind of its own or not after owning a couple of gals with, you know, personalities if I'm being polite. I've mentioned a couple of times, but if you don't know anything about my cursed dolls, I do recommend pausing this video and watching the one I did on haunted dolls you've never heard about, where I did a big deep dive into my collection and my friend Mysterion's collection. So long story short, haunted dolls at events like that are the real thing. If Anne with an E wasn't creep, if Anne with an E wasn't creepy enough for you though, back in 2021, a doll from Sault Ste. Marie named Karini has apparently been heard saying her name out loud and even moves around sometimes and moves around objects. The seller has added a disclaimer that you might not witness the paranormal activity described, so don't be disappointed if she behaves like the inanimate object that she is. And that's the thing with a lot of, you know, demon dolls. It depends on who they're around and if they want to or not. And since I'm on a tangent anyways, there was another nightmare doll that caught my eye because she reminds me of my own kissy kissy baby doll. Now this doll might look like any other, but according to the seller, it's pretty cursed. The seller who specializes in selling paranormal items that people don't want anymore says the doll's owner bought it at an antique shop and was told that it was cursed, but the seller used a lot of words antique that shops, the gal guys. didn't know. So she's like, ah, oh, you know what, it'll come home with me, whatever, I'll take care of it. So soon after, whenever she would open the doll that it came in or touch the doll, she would suffer She would suffer from terrifying nightmares of shadow people. This continued for several months until her son took it from her to sell it, and it sold for only $17.49, which, once again, steal of a deal. Duality 9Xers, you guys are in for a treat. I've got some bonus video content for you guys. Yeah, I apologize. I posted this video um, last night uh, and I thought about it. No, I, I got to do some more editing and I got to add some more um, some more content. So um, sorry about that, guys. But I hope you guys enjoy the extra footage. And uh, of course, hey, it's, it's good stuff, right? So let's get to it. Boom.
museum, you'll find haunted objects that are chained away in a separate room. Historic Ouija boards. One that is enclosed in a case because it might be cursed. A 19th century exorcism chair and the original Bibles found with the chair. Which has a cautionary sign next to it about demonic energy. A Baphomet statue. And of course, vampires. All things vampires. Are you still with me? This is the Vampa Museum in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And it's not curated to frighten you or glamorize evil. The Vampa Museum unearths the allure of vampires through art, artifacts, and objects of the paranormal. And showcases the friction between good versus evil throughout the centuries. They have their core values listed on their website. And one of them mentions heightened awareness and a proactive approach in fighting evil. On our way out, as the museum was closing, the person working there looked at me and said, Hey, tell your friends. So that's exactly what I want to do. At the Vampa the Vampa Museum in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. I heard about this. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Lots of creepy, creepy artifacts. Feel about that in Vegas, right. at Vegas Haunted Museum yeah. is probably the biggest spot for all the haunted objects of the world. He will let us oh, sit wow. in the, the devil's, devil's rocking, rocking chair, chair. which was that? another Conjuring movie, yeah. I believe. It was like a Conjuring sequel. The Conjuring Three is based on this exorcism, and this specific rocking chair was there during the actual exorcism in the mm -hmm. 1970s. It's thought to believe that just like a place could be haunted, something could haunt an object, and that could be the vessel that it's with there. Right next to this chair. This kid named David Glatzel was thought to be possessed, and they had multiple, but at least one exorcism on this guy that said to have multiple demons attached. We don't know, whatever it was. Then people said that right after the exorcism, people could see something that they coined the beast sitting in this rocking chair, this mist, whatever it was, and they were so scared of it. And then after that, no one sat in this chair. Telling me about haunted objects. Can you go into uh, some detail about that? In Vegas, that right. Vegas haunt that actually a little bit earlier, uh, but this kind of gives you a little bit more context into what it is. Um, it was featured in a movie, uh, and apparently, just just go on Google, guys. There's so many. There's there, there's so much stuff about about this particular artifact. Um, yeah, it's not for the faint at heart. We're hanging up this portrait of this lovely, striking gentleman, it's not funny, that we bought at an NC Fall over the weekend for how much? $15. And I saw this picture six months ago, but couldn't buy it because the booth it was at was closed on Sunday, so we could finally buy it, and we were talking the entire ride home about how we got such a good deal on this man, even though he was there for six entire months, and he was only $15. And not once did either of us consider that maybe, just maybe, that there was a reason he was there for six months and only $15. So I left him at my boyfriend's house for him to figure it out. We're hanging up this portrait of this lovely... Boo! It's only me. But if that didn't give you a fright, this place certainly will. Welcome to Bygone Times in Chorley, Northwest England. A number of artifacts here are said to be haunted, like this item from an old ghost train. So much paranormal activity has happened here over the years, the owners now host ghost tours at night. Having been a former mill in the Victorian era, many of the workers were killed by the unsafe machinery. It has become quite clear to the staff and many of the visitors, especially those at night, that those dead workers have not quite left. The second floor is said to be plagued by a poltergeist. Now this rather angry ghost not only throws objects around, but has actually been known to forcibly hit people on the back. Naturally, when they spin round to confront the assaulter, there's nobody there. Whilst exploring, we had our own paranormal encounter Take a look at this. It's holding it. By itself. What the hell? Come look at this. Now, I can honestly tell you in this section, it was only the two of us down there. You can hear me at the beginning of that clip commenting how cold it suddenly got. I then noticed the rocking chair was moving with quite some force on its own. It freaked out the both of us. Anyway, in this next section of the video, you'll see a few of the traditional old penny arcade machines. This area is said to be haunted by the ghosts of two little girls that appear in front of visitors before walking through a solid wall. In total, there are supposedly 10 ghosts here. Wow, Which guys. one will you encounter? You gotta go check that museum out. Ask her something that it had never said before. A man noticed his niece playing with her talking toy mirror. When he overheard it, ask her something that it had never said before. Hola, bienvenido al Castillo de los Sueños. 
El Espejo Mágico. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Yo soy Jessie, la princesa más bella del castillo de los sueños del Espejo Mágico. ¡Qué tierna eres! Nosotros seremos mejores amigas. ¿Tu personaje favorito? Si te hace preguntas, mi favorito es mi padre. Si me da preguntas, yo responderé que la que más me gusta es mi mami. Y si tú me preguntas, te diré que el que más me gusta eres tú. Soy una niña muy inteligente. The device came with several pre-recorded captions, and one day it asked her a question that he'd never heard it ask. Tell me a secret that you've never told anybody. Took the batteries out of the toy and hid it from his niece. And after his first video explaining what happened, his comments were flooded with many people saying they had the exact same toy, and it never spoke. Curious, more and more people began asking about the toy, so he puts the batteries back inside of it and turns it on. <laughs> Hola, bienvenido al castillo de los sueños del espejo mágico. Hola. Hola, encantado de conocerte. <risa> Gracias, amigo. Me da gusto. <risa> Eres muy divertido. ¿Tienes una fiesta? Mm, no, no tengo fiesta. ¿Tú tienes? No sé. Cuando me levanté. Man noticed his niece playing with her talking toy mirror when he um you see how that mirror was talking with this individual and it and it didn't overlap it it, it was kind of free flowing conversation so as soon as the guy stopped as soon as the guy answered the question then the mirror would and you know ask another question and then. Then the man would respond again, and then the mirror would talk. So it's almost like it was waiting on cue. Like usually, electronic devices, they just continue to do what they do. That recording would have, you know, interrupted him and overlapped. Uh, that is quite weird. And by the way, Ghost Host Spooks, this guy's amazing. Uh, check out one of my earlier videos that I did about um, about a about a story of skinwalkers. Uh, and it actually had to do with his own personal story. So check it out. It's in my, you know, it's in the history, guys. You guys could check it out. you like it. Starting at number four. These are the world's most haunted dolls. Starting at number about four. This as well. Letta the doll. A 200-year-old wooden doll with human hair. She was discovered beneath a house in Australia. Carrie Walton, the caretaker of this doll, witnessed many strange things ever since he took her inside his home. Marks on the floor, objects mysteriously moving, and strange noises at night. Number 3. Okiku This doll was purchased by a young man in 1918 in Japan as a gift for his younger sister. Tragically, after a year, the little girl passed away from a severe case of the flu. Sometime later, the family noticed something off about the doll's hair. It was originally short and it has grown past its shoulder until this day. The doll's hair is maintained on a regular basis wow. because it never stopped okay. growing. Number 2. Annabelle Known for its infamous movie releases and stories with Ed and Lorraine Warren, we do know that this doll is possessed by something that is evil and whoever held this doll suffered from many bad things. Therefore, the doll is now stored in the Warren Museum, safe and sealed. But Annabelle is not the most haunted doll, because coming at number one, Robert. Robert is not an ordinary doll. This thing is sinister. This doll is possessed by a demon, and it speaks to children. In Florida, in the early 1900s, this doll was gifted to a young boy named Robert Eugene and his parents always used to hear Robert and his doll speak in the bedroom alone. And the family used to hear the voice of the doll respond. Eugene kept his doll till 1974 until he passed away at an old age. No one knew why this old man kept his doll for more than 70 years. After his death, Robert was given to the East Martello Museum. 
Visitors who have taken his picture without permission claim to have experienced terrible misfortune. If you visit Robert in the museum, you will see that this doll is surrounded by apology letters and also other letters, like permission to look at him. And no one dares to take a picture of Robert. The big box is possibly one of the most haunted objects we know of. And for a wine box without any wine, it's sure got a lot of spirit. It was previously owned by a survivor of the Holocaust. Before she died, she stated that the box was haunted and home to a spirit called a Dybbuk, which is Hebrew for to cling. A Dybbuk is said to be a disembodied human spirit that, because of its former sins, is forced to wander relentlessly until it finds sanctuary in a body. Only then can it achieve self-perfection. The spirit is said to inhabit the host until it has atoned for all of its sins. Now what I think is interesting is, if this box is a prison to a Dybbuk, how did it get there in the first place? Well, since a Dybbuk's main purpose is to achieve self-perfection, whatever that is for that spirit, it's not impossible to think that a spirit could infest an object to fulfill its own tasks. So maybe this box belonged to the Holocaust survivor and was beneficial to her, which in turn was fulfilling the Dybbuk's purpose. Once she died, I wonder if the Dybbuk was thinking that it would pass on as well but it didn't. Maybe now the spirit is filled with rage, only wanting to escape the box, but is forever trapped in this prison. There are many sources that state that the box was a hoax, but even if that's true, the history of the Dybbuk exists outside of this box in Hebrew folklore, literature, and a bunch of other stories in Catholicism, Islam, and Christianity. I always feel like if there's separate cultures telling similar stories, that there has to be some truth to these myths. The Dybbuk box is possibly one of the most haunted that that, that is some pretty, pretty freaky stuff, guys, because we, we just talked about this as one of the most haunted objects in the world. Um, so it's earlier in the video, but um, again, there's a lot of stuff about this particular box. Uh, yeah, it's not the, kind of, not the kind of stuff that you want to play around with. To remember about mirrors in public. Put your finger up to it, and if there's a space, you're in a safe place. Fun facts for Brian. is the reflection of the cat.
Go to Boys that actually exist. The evil stick. Talked about this so many times, guys. Stay away from it. Actually, if you guys purchased anything like this, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'm outraged over it. I want to know how, how they think that that is suitable for a child. A name on it, it says Evil Stick. So from the name, I would ha if I'm buying it for my kid, and I have a lot of kids, and I have young ones, I would inspect it before would you I buy this? give it to them. It's like a, a child's anime series character. Again, that kind of goes with the Princess Wand, not so much a girl slicing her arm open. But anyway, uh, down here in the corner, it says, I can send out the luster of the beauty. I don't know what that means. Creepy toys. Creepy old man. Can you light that up? Hello. <laughs> If come towards me, back away from it so it stops making a noise, please. Thank you. Wow. Can you light that up? If come towards me, back away from it so it stops making a noise, please. Thank you. Can you light that up? It's shaking. It's moving back and forth, I swear to God. What are we gonna do? Stop. Oh, just think about like what's actually happening right now. Like that's so scary. Like we're in the house and there's something. I know. Stop, don't say yeah, that. I don't wanna fucking stand there. There's something grabbing from the Okay, hold on. How the hell are we gonna go to sleep? I have school tomorrow. Oh shit, you have school? Open. Wait, the door just the opened? Door open. <laughs> Where's the light? Dude, so much light the door. Stop, dude. Hey, good night. Who? Hey, good night. Trevor, there's no one up there. Who's up there? Show me. Who's up there? Who's up there? Jagger, there's no one up there. Oh. He's been talking to that vent, and then he was blowing it kisses. And I'm creeped oh, out now. Like, good. seriously, I'm not joking. I'm so creeped out right now. My roommate, because we are moving soon. The house seemed fine, but there was no mention of a basement. When I walked through at first, there was no issue. But when I recorded the basement, I filmed something I cannot explain. Not even developed. Probably used for like storage and stuff. Hmm. Oh wow. Oh.
were recorded by a man named Jacob who inherited his grandmother's house. Along with the house came a oh. tense atmosphere and a terrifying video clown doll dolls. named Jeffrey. Watch. One night in September of last year, Jacob was woken up unexpectedly. That's creepy. Wake up in the middle of the night and that's what you see staring I just right at you. From the closet. Oh wow. Following the yeah. incident, he decided to move Jeffrey to his own room, but this didn't stop the strange occurrences. I just heard banging. Wow. I wonder if he's in like a condo or maybe he, the bumps he's hearing is probably from another residence. Field, don't open the door, but he did. There's the doll staring at the wall. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a really old, creepy house. It's like the walls are not even done, it almost looks like it's like unfinished. Oh wow. There's something going on. It's not cool. Oh! I always get goosebumps watching that. As guys. of May of this year, Jeffrey is now placed down in the basement, which might just be the best place for him. Could that house Probably. or maybe even Jeffrey himself be haunted? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? Let me know what you think. The look of this thing. This is the Swansea Devil statue located in Wales. This creepy thing has quite the story beginning at the end of the 19th century. It all starts when they decided to rebuild the Swansea St. Mary's Church. The design was up for grabs and one architect, Sir Arthur Blomfield, won the contract. The rebuild was complete in 1896 and it won almost universal acclaim. But one architect from the city felt overlooked and he was seeking revenge. He actually bought the properties next to the church and turned them into offices. Atop one of his buildings, he placed the Swansea Devil statue staring right at the church. To the locals, he became known as Old Nick. The architect then proclaimed these words, My devil will be able to leer and laugh. 
for at some future time he will see St. Mary's Church burn to the ground. And that is exactly what happened. During World War II there was a bombing wow. campaign and it destroyed St. Mary's Church. Amazingly though, the Swansea Devil and the building he was fixated on was untouched. He actually remained there until 1962 when the offices were demolished. It then seemingly vanished without a trace until the 1980s when it was found in an antique dealer's garage. As of 2019, he is now at the Swansea Museum. Whether the legend is true or not, the curators at the museum made sure to position him so he still faces the same church. The world's most cursed ice. Supposedly a haunted mirror. I'm super excited. I got something in the mail today. It's supposedly a haunted mirror. I'm super excited. I've lived in a haunted house before. Actually, this is my childhood home that I'm sitting in right now. And it is haunted. And then my apartment is also haunted. But that's because I brought something there. Anyways, I've never had a haunted object. And someone gifted me this haunted mirror. We're gonna unbox it together. I have this client at work. She ended up being a fan of Hauntingly Krista. I'm a social media manager, so that's what I do for a living. Beyond my haunted spooky stuff. She called the other week, um, my work, and she was like, I just got possession of a haunted mirror. Does Hauntingly Krista want it? And Somebody like, wanted to send me something yeah. haunted. I'd be Hauntingly like, no, Krista no, wants the mirror. Good. Now there is a like, long yeah, on, like history and stories going with why this mirror is haunted. Where it originated from, we, we're not sure, but Look at I picture. have like history from the past Michael owners Myers. of it. So I'll make a whole video on that because there's a lot. Apparently it takes some time for whoever's in possession of it to like experience the hauntings. So, what was I saying? I forget. I'm just super excited. Okay. It's facing down. Oh, wow. That looks antique. Wait. Whoa. Okay. So this is said haunted mirror in question for now. Wow. Hey, I got something in the mail today. It's supposed to Guys, that's all the time that we have today. I love that. That was interesting stuff. Um, definitely going to talk more about